Hello, it's David at DCES UK, and this is New Toy Tuesdays, an occasional slot where I look at something new and fruity. Indeed, it's become so occasional that it's been over a year since I made one of these videos, and today's item is something I originally purchased last May, so there's no excuse for not having knocked up something sooner, although I seem to have managed to make it completely not suitable for work. Honestly, I, I don't know how these things happen, but just what the ruddy hell is it that I'm even showing you today? Well, I have here a battered example of the Klein NCVT6 non-contact voltage detector with laser measure. And the fact it is so battle-scarred is perhaps testament to the fact that this has been the go-to as toted on my tool belt for the last 12 months. Back in May of 2020, I was perusing Twitter to see what the loonies were all ganging up to cancel on that particular day when I came across a tweet by BJR Group extolling the virtues of this particular piece of whizzy whiz and not wanting to be outdone. I duly placed an order with CEF to quickly get my fingers fingering one of my very own. I think I'm on record as stating the Fluke Volt Alert is my non-contact audible warbler of choice and frankly anything displacing that needs to be something special. The NCVT6 obviously met the challenge because here we are a whole year on and I honestly can't tell you where my Fluke even is. It's been filed and forgotten it seems because the Klein really is the bollocks. But before we play with it, let's have a quick recap of how these magic wands work. Oh. I've described the operation of these in a previous video linked in the description, so no need to go into it in too much detail again here. But it's important to reiterate the limitations of any non-contact tester. These things are handy for a quick and dirty indication of a live cable but they're not recognised as a device suitable for proving safe isolation. Only a contact voltage detector, proven working by a proving unit or known good source, is fit for purpose for proving dead. Still, any spark worth their salt keeps a non-contactor hand for a quick and convenient diagnosis on what might be live. When a current passes down a wire, it creates a magnetic field, as pictured here with all zigzags and shit coming out of the end. Many people assume this is what the non-contact device is detecting, but that's not the case as these things will pick up wiring that's energised, where no load is connected, no current is flowing, and no magnetic field is present. Instead, what these things are detecting is the electric field, a field of charged particles that radiate from an energised wire, whether carrying current or not. That other video of mine I referred to bleated on about how an electric field could cause a LED lamp to glow when switched off. That tends to happen on a switch drop where you have one energised wire to the switch, one wire connected to the lamp, which is non-energised when the switch is in the off position, and an insulating gap between them. That's two conductive parts separated by an insulator which, as spotty electronics nerds will attest, is how a capacitor is constructed. The electric field radiating from the energised wire allows a tiny current to be induced onto the non-energised wire which passes through the lamp to get to neutral. The current, puny though it is, may nonetheless actuate the circuitry within the lamp, causing it to glow faintly when it's supposedly switched off. If the switch wiring is in twin and earth, then the circuit protective conductor should null this current out as it provides a direct path to earth instead of the current having to take the more resistive path through the lamp and neutral. So this phenomenon, when witnessed on twin and earth wiring, may indicate the earth has not been connected, and another video from this time last year where I'd clearly been snorting the Prosecco instead of sipping it showed an example of a switch drop where some dickhead had left the CPC disconnected to a metal switch, causing capacitive tingles for the homeowner whenever she walked into the room and twiddled her nubbin. To detect and report upon the presence of this electric field, a non-contact detector requires two things. Firstly, its antenna, as housed in the plastic bell end, needs to be in proximity to the field. Secondly, the device itself needs to be capacitively coupled to earth. For the former, it obviously needs to be placed close enough to a conductor that the field is detectable, 
and for the latter it tends to rely on the body of the operator holding it acting as another capacitive link to earth. I can demonstrate how crucial this capacitive coupling is with this Qtech Q-Stick Duo, which, if held next to this live brown tail, will warn of the presence of an electric field emanating from it through this rather pleasing two-tone toot. However, if I withdraw myself from the device, you can see it stops operating, as it is no longer capacitively coupled to Earth through me. It needs that reference back to Earth to operate, and I can reintroduce that by bringing my body closer to it. I don't actually have to touch it. Well, the casing's plastic anyway, so I'm not seeing any direct electrical contact with it, even if I'm gripping it. But if I place it between the line and neutral tails, then you will observe I can now successfully withdraw from it as it's now capacitively coupled to Earth via its proximity to neutral, and it no longer needs me to go drunkenly waving my hand, willy, or any other protruding parts around in its general direction. I use the Q-Stick for this demonstration just because it's easier to balance on here, but all non-contact detectors, including the Klein, will behave in the same way, as they'll work in the same way. They're all fallible. They can be sat right next to a live wire, yet fail to report such where the capacitive link to an earth source isn't present through the operator as designed. So non-contact detectors have their limitations. Nonetheless, they're handy to have dangling from the old tool belt. You know, visually, Nige says the client looks like a dog's cock. <laughs> Personally, I've never paid that much attention to such things, so I'll take his expert word for it. But I know what he means to a certain extent, as it does bear an uncanny resemblance to my own prosthetic wang, installed after that unfortunate accident with the folding mechanism of a Black & Decker workmate. A lesson to us all in the importance of keeping our trousers on when undertaking a spot of DIY. Actually, I've been having a bit of jip with the old robot custard launcher of late. The wife demanded I go for the extra-large T1000, of course. But the bloody spring's got a mind of its own. Much like the organic when it replaced, I suppose. It's just very embarrassing when it pops out in front of prospective clients. Oh, just talking about it has awakened the beast. Artisan electrics. Artisan electrics. <sighs> Close call. Let's get back on topic and see what makes the NCBT6 the mutts nuts over the trusty fluke vault alert. <sighs> and I suppose we should continue with the non-contact function. When I switch it on, we get visual and audible feedback and a backlit inverted display giving us a battery indication, and that addresses some features lacking in lesser models. Some are visual only, but you want visual and audible when working in anger. Also, other models usually lack any battery strength monitor, so having a heads up of a poorly power supply is good, as dicky batteries can cause misbehaviour, probably just as you've crawled to the far end of an awkward attic where you need to use the thing. When blue, the LED indicator informs us that no electric field is presently detected, and that will turn red as we move the device toward any live parts radiating electrical goodness. Besides the red indicator, the stronger the detected field as I move the device closer to the source, the faster the audible chirping gets. There's also a strength indicator on the display from 0 bars to 5, as it ranges from a frigid field at one extreme, all the way to one with a warm and welcoming wide on. Stay down, boy! Stay down! But non-contact detection is only half the story here, as this thing also doubles up as a laser measure. We'll carry such, I'm sure, and this Stanley is a staple of my Ultimate Electrician's Toolbox, as shown in an old video, but it isn't half handy to have one hanging off one's hip. When in measurement mode, I can point the laser, hit the button, and hey presto, the target is three and a half metres away. By holding down the middle button, I can convert to Imperial or USC measurements, so that's 137 inches, or what's this, inches with fractions? I'm not sure we'd be masochistic enough to think that's a good idea. 
Another press gives us feet, and one more gives us feet with fractions? What the hell? I don't know why anybody still clings on to medieval measurements. Uh, they're fucking ridiculous. And frankly, I'm not interested in anybody extolling their virtues in the comments. I, I don't care if you do get 13 schmecks to a feckle, 5 feckles to a pleck, and 21 and 4 fifths plecks to a, a stick up the arse. It it's not 1826 anymore. But you know, at least North America accepts their Fred Flintstone units of measurement. And most of the rest of the world accepts metric, of course. But it gets right on my sprouts that the UK flits between two systems, with imperial generally for drinking and driving and body measurements, but metric for near everything else, including temperature, until it gets to a hot summer's day, and then the newspapers start headlining about 100 degree heat waves, like fucking Fahrenheit means anything to anyone here. I'm sorry, I, I, I shouldn't go off on a rant. You wouldn't get this kind of negativity on a, a, a better channel like Nick Bundy's. Adam and Nick, I'll tell you what, they bring a smile to my... Oh, no. oh shit! Drop your pants. You have 20 seconds to comply. There's nobody here, you stupid bastard. Retract! Retract! <sighs> Typical. Two days out of warranty and this stupid Steve Austin strap-on starts malfunctioning. You now have 15 seconds to comply. <sighs> Time to be wiping yackles off the walls again. Ah, besides, every time it goes off, I soil myself. A -a Alexa, disable robot hard on. Robot hard on isn't responding. Oh, cheers. Oh, Dick, I'm very disappointed in you. Four, three, two, one. I am now authorized to fling yogurt.